My name is Aaron Gonzalez. I, I'm a business advisor at the Small Business Development Center. We're actually not on campus. We're at the old Hager building, the CES building, uh, on Freddy Gonzalez and the Expressway. Um, what we do is we offer free business advice to people that want to start a business or expand a business. Um, many people come to us with just basic questions like, I want to start a business, but I don't know where do I start? How do I register? What do I need? What kind of licenses do I need? Things like that. Um, so we'll help with that. We'll guide them in the right direction. Some people go to a bank. The bank refers them to us because they want help with a business plan. Um, my background's in banking for about eight years. And before the economy uh, suffered and things like that, they had what they called handshake deals at banks. As long as you had good credit, you had some land, you knew your banker, you could pretty easily get a loan. You know, yeah, I got collateral, good credit, we shake hands, they'll give you a $100,000 loan, whatever you're looking for. Nowadays, no matter who you are, uh, you can be related to the owner of the bank, doesn't matter, they all want a business plan. Um, all these banks got in trouble, so they really have to watch out for themselves. They want a business plan, financial projections, market research, all that stuff, and that's where we come in. We'll help you put all that together. Um, let's play on this one. So we're one of a thousand SBDCs all over the country. We cover the, the four counties in the valley. Um, there's one uh, in Laredo, Corpus. They cover larger areas, but just know that there's a thousand other centers all over the, the country, and we're partly funded by the Small Business Administration and mostly by grant money. So like I said, our mission is just to provide professional guidance to people that want to start a business or have an existing business that may just need a little bit of help. And they have some questions, um, concerns about, you know, did I hire my employees right? Did I do my paperwork right? Stuff like that. Anything business related. Uh, this morning, I was teaching a class about social media to business owners. And they had a lot of questions how they can use Facebook, Twitter, all these different things to help their business. So. Um, there's a lot of different topics that, that we cover. Our fiscal year just ended, uh, but these are last year's numbers. You can see one-on-one -on -one clients, we met with over 1,000, and that's one-on-one -on -one sessions. It's usually about an hour long that uh, either myself or one of the other business advisors, there's seven other advisors, will meet in an office with the door closed. Everything, like I said, is free and it's confidential. So when you come in that first time, you'll sign a confidentiality agreement that uh, everything you talk about to us stays between us. So if you need to talk about, hey, you know, I have credit issues, I have financial issues, things like that, we're not going to go tell the bank or anyone else or anything like that. So it's all confidential. That also helps a lot for some of you that have some ideas for inventions. We've been working a lot with inventors. and. Um, Something about inventors is they try to ask for help sometimes, but they don't want to tell you what they're doing because they don't want you to steal their ideas. So it's very hard sometimes to work with them. Even after the confidentiality agreement, sometimes they still don't want to tell me what they're doing. And that's fine. They don't have to tell me what they're doing, how they're doing, but I have to know who's it for in order to help them. So if you do have an invention in mind, you don't have to tell people your, your uh, secret sauce, as Steve from the chamber would say. Um, but you do have to know who it's for, who your market is, who your customers are, uh, in order for us to, to be able to help you. Um, let's stay on this one. So we help, like I said, banks refer a lot of their clients to us to help with a business plan. Uh, last year we helped $43 million in financing get secured, 44 loans, uh, 132 workshops like the one I spoke about that we had this morning. And those are... So really, why we're funded by the government is for job creations. And you see there at the bottom, almost 1,000 jobs that we help create or retain in the valley. Uh, you can go to the next one. So some of the different services we offer, um, like I said, there's one-on-one -on -one, uh, business counseling or advice. Um, there's the classes we teach. But one of the really valuable things that we can offer you is market research. So like I said, if you have a, a new invention and you want to know, well, is there a market for this? Um, 
what am I going to do? Who am I going to sell this to once it, it rolls out? Or how do I commercialize it? We can help you with all that. If you just have a local business, um, a cupcake shop, we can help you figure out how many other cupcake shops are in McAllen, what their sales are, uh, what the proximity is from them to you, uh, how many people in that area buy sweets, I mean, stuff like that. Uh, and Nick's going to go over some of the specific market research. Um, but it's a good resource. It's a good uh, market research package that you can get that's probably worth thousands of dollars if you had to pay a consultant or a company to do it. And you get it for free by signing up with us. Um, so the business plan part of it, we don't, a lot of people think that we write the business plan for you or that we're business plan packagers. That's not the case. There are people out there, there's consultants. I know because I used to be one that will charge you quite a bit of money to put a business plan together. Um, you, it's really hard to find someone that's good at that because you can find a company out of California that says, I'll write a business plan for you for $1,000. Um, then you take it to the bank. The bank will look at it really quickly and hand it right back and say, that's not what we want. We want to know. They'll give you stuff on the, the industry of the type of business you're doing, very general stuff that you could probably Google yourself. Uh, but what the bank wants to know is about you. What is your experience? What are your hours of operation? Who are you going to hire? Um, what are you going to use the loan for? So when I say we don't write the business plan for you, we sit with you and ask you all these questions before you get to the bank or to somebody, an investor, and we, we help you write the business plan. So we have a template that we follow. You're going to provide us all the information, and the business plan is going to be very customized for your own business. Even if you're not going to go to a bank, it's a good idea to have it because sometimes you may have not thought of all of these questions. You may not have thought, who's going to set up my IT network or um, you know, what, how long is it going to take me to set up my office? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so these things should all be in your business plan. You should know all these things ahead of time and do all this research so that when you open the doors and you're ready for business, you're not scrambling around looking for all of these research uh, resources and figuring out who's doing what. Um, so. Like I said about the training this morning, we have what we call core trainings. It's like uh, a basics in business, power of business planning, uh, marketing training. Then we have some more specialized trainings like social media, branding, um, market research. There's payroll compliance, um, legal tips. So some of you that, that have legal questions about your business, and maybe you can't afford to pay an attorney $200 for the 20 minutes that he's going to give you actual advice. Uh, we do have some of these trainings where attorneys will go speak, and you'll have the opportunity to ask them questions if you don't mind the rest of the people there knowing what your question is. Um, you can ask, if you have just very basic questions, it's a good, a good training to ask these questions. Oh, well, I got ahead of myself. So some of the, those are the, some of the topics that we're going through. Uh, recently, we started doing, well, recently it's been three years, but innovation and commercialization. Um, so we're getting into those topics as well. Uh, the market research, um, I'm going to hand that over to Nick, and he'll, he'll tell you a little bit more, specifically some examples of just a small subsection of all the different market research that we can offer. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Nick. I'm an uh, undergraduate here at UTPA, and I'm a research assistant at the SBDC. So with the re uh, market research that we provide at the SBDC, uh, you, when you come in with your business plan, you're, a lot of people have a lot of trouble with actually developing the market research because they don't have the tools uh, and the databases that we can provide for them. So it's really helpful when you come to us uh, for you because uh, we do have access to a lot of uh, expensive databases uh, that we're able to do sp uh, very specific research for uh, your company. You can go to the next slide. So we can do uh, demographics in certain areas. Uh, if, you know, 
you're not sure exactly who your target market is, we're able to help you identify who they may be. Uh, there's a lot of specific uh, research by households. We can use uh, actually public uh, database. The Census Bureau is a good area where we're able to find information on demographics mostly. Um, and right here, it's the, this is mostly uh, all the demographics that you can get off of uh, the Census Bureau. Consumer expenditures, we have access to databases through the SBDC that allow us to actually find per household uh, different uh, you know, expenditures per household per year uh, in different industries. So if you're interested in opening up a maybe a uh, bar and you want to know how much per household spends on beer or uh, the like, uh, we're able to find that kind of information for you so that you know how to develop your uh, business plan. Uh, industry performance uh, is a huge factor in developing your uh, business plan because you, you may not have the access, like I said, to the databases that will allow you to understand uh, where uh, your industry is actually going. Uh, and we're able to have access to not only that, but within these uh, resources, have they have competitor information and uh, you know everything within your industry that you may not have thought of before. I don't know too much in depth with what we're kind of allowed to say on some of our databases. I kind of wanted to move it over to Aaron on that particular one. Um, yeah, so with the, the industry performance, basically, um, if you're going into an industry that's high risk, uh, let's say you're going into construction, you want, you want to get a loan at the bank for construction, and they're like, well, construction's going down. It's been a mess since 2009. We can pull these reports and show that the industry as a whole in the U.S. is showing that this industry specifically is going to climb for the next five to ten years or whatever they're predicting. And then they'll have some more information specifically why and what some companies are doing that, that is different, um, that is helping them overcome uh, the, the economic downturn. It also it will tell you um, on average, for the industry, what a certain business spends on employees or cost of goods or things like that. So they can compare with your projections and make sure that you're kind of within the same ballpark and you're not just uh, uh, projecting some, some numbers that are not realistic. So it's a good way to match up what your business is doing with the industry as a whole. Um, and then with the, with the gap analysis, this one is really popular with the cities, uh, city managers, economic developers really like this because it shows you retail sales uh, per city and then it shows you consumer expenditures. So for example, let's look at uh, automotive dealers, this first line up here. So in McAllen, 2014, $776 million in sales for automotive sales. But the people of McAllen only spent $239 million. So that tells someone that over $500 million was coming in from outside of McAllen to buy automobiles. They can attribute that probably to a lot of people coming from Mexico or uh, the surrounding areas. So that, that'll tell you on that side that a lot of these people are coming in from somewhere else. The opposite goes for, we see down here, beer, wine, and liquor stores. Um, they did 15 million in sales, but consumers spent 49 million dollars, which means 33 million dollars was leaving McAllen to go for alcohol sales. So, kind of shows you the inflow and outflow of different businesses, and maybe there's an opportunity to put up another liquor store or bar or something like that because, well, actually bars are listed under uh, restaurants, but these would just be beer, wine, and liquor stores. So you can see maybe there's op an opportunity for me to go build another liquor store um, in McAllen since a lot of people are leaving those areas. Uh, we can get competitor uh, competitive analysis data on uh, the different uh, 
you know, competitors that you may have in the area. We have access to databases that are actually, if you go to the next slide, we have uh, a ring analysis. Well, I think it would be best if we went to a ring analysis because all of this data relates to this. Uh, we're able to find in a certain vicinity of where your uh, company is, you know, who you're going to be competing with. And we're able to get, you know, information on, it, it depends per uh, company, but we can get uh, figures such as their, you know, revenues and their uh, costs that they're incurring uh, at their businesses. If you're trying to set up a very similar business just like theirs, if you're trying to do a bar or uh, I know I'm keep on going back to a bar. I'm ready to go to the prom. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we can get a lot of uh, information on that for you, especially if you if you kind of want to match your business to uh, or not match it, but uh, you know want to understand exactly the kind of costs that go into it. Yes. I want to make sure I saw that number. Now that one. This is, this is the same slide, but this one's blown up a little bit more. So, yeah, and that's, that's this, this competitor, <laughs> this one was, yeah, this is done on a, this was pulled for, for cakes, and specialty cakes and probably cupcakes. Um, so sometimes you'll have an outlier that doesn't belong, which is this tortilla factory. And that's just because the NAICS code, they classified them under their manufacturing. So they're probably selling to HEB or Walmart or something. They're, they're producing mass. Uh, but what we would look at if we were going to do like a cupcake shop in Harlingen is these other smaller ones. So when we do our projections, we're not going to say, hey, we're going to come in and make $2 million the first year. And then the bank says, well, these other guys are only doing 280000 Where are you getting $2 million from? So also so that we're not projecting too low, you want to be kind of in the middle. You don't want to be lower than the lowest or highest than the highest. So, yes? Do you have like the sales or profit? These are sales. Yeah. Sales. Yeah. And they're not like off their income tax returns. They're, they're phone verified. Uh, we use a company called Reference USA. Um, they, I guess they hire out. So some of these you can see are the same and you're like, well, how can they be exactly the same? Uh, sometimes they'll verify one and then just go by number of employees. Um, but it, it's more or less in the, in the ballpark. You can tell the size of the business by looking at these. Uh, okay, so on the Texas Department of uh, Transportation, we can also get the traffic counts for different roads uh, that you want make that you want to uh, locate your business. Uh, it's very helpful, especially if you want to locate in an area that maybe is not on a main road, but very close to a main road. It's important to maybe find, uh, you know. I mean, location, 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 but uh, it's it's most expensive to be on the main roads, and if you want to be on maybe a skirt, off skirt of one of the main roads, we can help you find where maybe the best location for your business would be. These are our offices. Um, like Aaron said, uh, one of ours is in the old Hager, Hager building, uh, which is now called the Sess building. Uh, I believe I, I don't know. I'm new Community to engagement and student services. Yeah. I believe. Uh, and, and we yeah, and we have satellite offices. You can see yeah. the list down there. That's the Chase Bank in front of the Urban Uh Have you been there? It's been a while. I I think so. Is it the one next to the IBC Bank? The big one? Yeah, it says Chase Manhattan. That's our presentation. I want to put an emphasis on the uh, business planning. A lot of what we do is if you have an idea and you want to formulate it in a business plan, we can help you with that. Uh, we're not going to make the business plan for you, but if you put your due diligence in, we will help you a lot. Uh, and I know that from experience, from working there, uh, a lot of all I'm doing is editing the plans, formatting them, 
and uh, doing a lot of the market research that uh, may have been extremely difficult for you. So if you have a great idea and you're trying to formulate your business plan, the SBDC is a great place for you to go. Thank you. So can you, if you're not trying to make a business plan, but you just need data and information for something like writing a grant or something like that, can you just kind of walk in and say, hey, I need this amount of this data? Or? As long as you're using it for business purposes, then yeah. Yeah, you can get it. Um, if you can somehow tie it into the grant's going to help your existing business or something like that, you know, if you can show, or you may create a job out of it or something like that, then, you know, we can do it. Um, we really don't turn anyone away. We hope that when you come in, I mean, some people just have an idea, and they'll come in, talk to us, and then figure, well, this is a lot more work than I thought it was going to be, and a lot more money, and that's the last that, that we hear from them. Um, but we really hope that our help will get you to either start a business or hire another employee or get that loan for the bank. You know, so we hope that it's something in the along the lines of business because we want to help help um, keep those numbers growing, the job creations. So, yes. Market research process. If we do it in house, they're pretty quick. In a couple of days, they can get it done. If we have to source it out, so we have the uh, company called SBDC Net in San Antonio. They do all the research for all the thousand SBDCs. Um, they can get very detailed information, like the ring study, and it's a lot. They have about 25 line item things that they can research. Um, they're usually about 20 business days, but lately they've been faster. I think they're around 10 business days turnaround. So, but even with the ring analysis, uh, we can do a reference mm -hmm. USA, and uh, w usually I'll I'll get them in uh, from the uh, advisors and I'll do it the same day and send it back to the advisors and maybe they review to make sure that I'm sending the right information and then they'll send it out the the, the next day or that same day. Uh, industry information, same thing, uh, because of our the databases that we have, we're able to look up the uh, North American uh, industry class sort of uh, system, yeah, the NAICS, and uh, uh, or if you know that you can. Also send it to us if you're working. Well, you, you will know that if you start working with us on a business plan, uh, and we're able to use that code to find a lot of the uh, information through our data spaces. On the what? Business loans, the interest, banking. The interest? Yeah, banking. Um, it just depends. It depends where you're applying. There's a lender in McAllen that was offering 0% interest for a business in McAllen, um, that same lender will give you 18% interest if you don't have good credit and you're outside of McAllen. Uh, but for a bank, traditional banks, it's around 7% on average. Uh, depending on your credit, it can be lower or higher. Depending on the size of bank, the larger banks can give you lower rates. Smaller banks are gonna give you higher rates. Um, some of the larger banks won't lend to startups. They want you to have two years of of business financials before they even talk to you about making a loan. Um, there's a lot of a lot of funding sources. Um, if you feel like your bank's not a way to go, that you're not going to, your credit isn't there. We know of a lot of other options for you besides the bank. Um, some non-bank options that you can get some loans from. That, that was going to be my question. As a startup, as a student, or somebody that has no experience. We have a very good idea of high risk, but a large reward out of it. Um, are loans the answer, or does the SBA have grants? You know, like what do you guys suggest for like people that are really like high risk, really yeah. nobody would be willing to do anything unless it's like a secured loan, like we're gonna put it against the property. Like, is there is there a path for for students or somebody that's just starting out? Yeah, for the bank, they're gonna want a secured loan. They're, they're just for something very high risk. Um, they're going to want it fully collateralized, so a piece of land or a CD or something like that. Which most of my clients say, if I have a CD of $100,000, why would I go get a loan for $100,000? So, but that's the way the banks will, will tell you. Um, there are The SBA do, doesn't have any grants really for that, for business startups, but there are some um, like business plan contests or innovative grant contests. McAllen had some. They just gave away $50,000 to five different businesses uh, that were startups. Uh, more on the techno 
technological side. And $10,000 each isn't a lot, but it'll help get your uh, patent in place or something like that. Um, Mission also has one. You can get up to $25,000 of grant money, but they want you to be from Mission or located in Mission. So there are some places here in the Valley that are helping out. There's some, uh, some of the smaller cities, like Raymondville has a revolving loan fund where you can get money at a low interest, at like 3%. Um, and they're looking for, they'll, they'll lend to startups, you know, they're looking for something that, that that's innovative, something new probably, but of course something that they feel is gonna work. So that's where the business plan is important. Uh, I like to tell people, when I worked at the bank, people would come tell me about their idea, and then we would present it to the board once a month. It was a small bank, so the board approved all the big loans. Um, in that boardroom, you're not gonna be in that meeting. So the only representation you have in that meeting is either me and whatever information you told me or your business plan that's gonna have everything about your business in there. So if they ask me a question, what are their hours of operation? Uh, it's not in here. Uh, how many years experience does their general manager have? Nope, they didn't put it in here. Okay, shelf it for next month. So you wanna make sure you have all that information in there because that's you sitting at the table and, and um, it's a representation of yourself. So having a good business plan, whether it's a bank or an investor, um, you wanna have all that information in there uh, to sell yourself to to the bank or investor. Um, what about government bids or uh, city municipality contracts? That I know yeah. one of the biggest problems that I have with them is you know lack of experience or the right credential behind it. I mean, I, as far as yeah. like building a, like a proposal. Yeah, we have a center that, actually it's within our own same center. We have another department that does that, the procurement, uh, it, the procurement center for procurement technology and contracts, I think it stands for. We call it PTAC for short. They're in the same location and they offer free uh, counseling for that as well. They'll help you get on those lists, they'll help you get your bids together, they'll help you with HUD certifications and they'll guide you in the right direction to, to try to get those bids. I think right now they're working with a lot of contractors that are working on bids for all the new UTRGV buildings and construction. So um, they've been pretty busy. Um, there's a lot of projects going on. And if you feel like you have a service that can uh, work with all these new things that are going on, they'd be a good resource because they're already in contact with um, UT Systems. UT Systems has told them what they want out of those bids, and um, so they can help you put together the best proposal. Anyone else? Yes? I got, I got a couple questions. One of them yes. is easy, I think. Are most no. of the businesses that come to you are formed? Are they LLCs? No. Um, re actually, lately, a lot more of them have been LLCs. Most of them will start as a sole proprietorship or a partnership, and then um, and the only reason is because they can't afford the fees for the LLC, and they'll later convert to an LLC. Now, some of our our resource partners, attorneys, have said that the majority of them it's unnecessary for them to have an LLC if the only reason they're doing it is to protect protect themselves from a lawsuit or something like that. Um, now, if they're doing it for tax purposes, other things like that, then normally their CPA will advise them to do that. A lot of them want to do an LLC right away because they think if somebody sues me, they're going to take my house or my car or stuff like that. And, and that's not the case. The uh, attorney just tells them, as long as you have some good insurance, sometimes even having an LLC is not going to help you if the other person has a good case. So, um, But it's, it's about 50-50 that come in already as an LLC just because somebody told them that they should have an LLC. So before they ever even make a business sale or do anything, they already have uh, an LLC filed. Yes? The uh, the data, I'm familiar with the census, you know, like the way Adam is using them also, you know, the website. Um, the census data is the market data and stuff like that, you know, we have 2009 up there. Are you, are you able to get that on the annual basis? Yes, yeah, that, that's, that, the, that slide is old, but yes, we're able to get it um, pretty current. The gap analysis I showed you that has the retail sales for the city yeah. is within, it's like from two months ago. So 
And they use that, they get that information from credit card sales, uh, debit card transactions. So that, that's how they can get it right away. Everything's electronic. Um, the demographics, whatever, as soon as the census releases new information, we can get it. Um, but yeah, we, we have current up-to-date stuff. We, should, we need to update our slides. <laughs> I was just, yeah, you know, yeah. just wondering how often you got that. There's a lot of stuff in the census stuff left, like, you know, four or five years old. And so yeah. Like, yeah. It doesn't really help it in a lot of cases. Yeah, and, and I work with, I have a satellite in Raymondville, so I go there once a week and I'm constantly providing them new demographic information. Uh, normally I'll just request it from San Antonio and they'll send me uh, whatever current stuff they have.